Hey guys, back again. This is going to be crazy Catholicism. You think that I'm just going to stay focused on Calvinism? No. I'm going to talk about Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, Islam, Roman Catholicism, all that. And I already have. Okay, I've already done some videos on Roman Catholicism where, uh, you know, I'm debunking their teaching that um, Peter was the first pope. That's one of my favorite videos that I've done. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's not the best. It could be done better, definitely. And Hopefully in the future I'll go over things and make it better. Even this video today, you know, I'm just throwing stuff out there now because I need to get a lot of things covered and, you know, my plate's full and uh, there's so much that I want to do. But anyways, I decided to do this today because I thought it'd be something kind of quick and, and good for me to go over and something different from Calvinism. And Catholicism and Calvinism are kind of related a little bit. Um, but anyways... You know, today I'm going to talk about transubstantiation. And so, what is transubstantiation? I'm going to read right from the Catholic Catechism. And this is Article 1376. It says, The Council of Trent summarizes the Catholic faith by declaring, Because Christ, our Redeemer, said that it was truly his blood that he was offering under the species of bread, it has always been the conviction of the Church of God in this Holy Council now declares again that by the consecration of the bread and wine there takes place a change of the whole substance of the bread into the substance of the body of Christ our Lord and of the whole substance of the wine into the substance of his blood. This change the Holy Catholic Church has fittingly and properly called transubstantiation. So. Basically, uh, the Catholics have their thing called the Mass, you know, where they go to their church building, and uh, they have different things that they do, but one thing that they always do is communion, okay? When Jesus said, um, you know, eat this bread, drink this wine, you know, this is my body, this is my blood. Well, lots of church buildings do this, you know, sometimes every week, sometimes monthly, or whenever. But anyways, the Catholic Church, they take a spin on it where they say where the Catholic priest um, actually transforms that, that bread and that wine into the literal body of Christ and the literal blood of Christ. And so, of course, this sounds very absurd, but we're going to look at some verses that they'll use as proof texts. And so we're going to go to... Matthew chapter 26, we're going to look at verses 26 and 28, uh, I'll read through 26 through 28, and so Matthew 26 verse 26 says, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my blood. So there the Catholics are going to say, literally, Jesus said, this is my blood, or this is my body, <laughs> I said. <laughs> Take, eat, this is my body. Okay, so the Catholics are going to say, literally, this is Christ's body, because he said, this is my body. And continuing, and he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. He said, this is my blood. So he said, this is my body, for the bread, this is my blood for the wine. Now let's also look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25, because this is another one that they'll use. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25, says, After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. So they'll say this cup is the New Testament. Again, literally. The cup is the New Testament. The cup is literally his blood. And the bread is literally his body. Well, for one thing, Jesus hadn't died yet. So Jesus was physically, literally there, talking to his disciples, saying, take this bread, this is my body. And so if it was meant to be that the bread was literally, physically his body, then... Uh, <clears throat> they would say, what, you know, that's your body? I thought, that's your body, <laughs> you know, you're sitting there talking to us, and that's your body, not this piece of bread. 
Okay. But, uh, so Jesus hadn't died yet. He was actually there, so it doesn't make any sense for them to believe that the bread was literally, physically, his body. And he didn't say that the bread will one day become my body or that the, the wine will one day become my blood. Okay, he said this is, and he was right there, so that wouldn't make any sense to take it literally. So, basically, you know, what we have here is like a metaphor. What about all of these I am statements of Jesus? You know, I am the true vine. I am the door of the sheep. Okay, all these awesome I am statements that proclaim the deity of Christ. Obviously, we're not to take those literally. Jesus is not literally physically a door. Okay, he's not literally physically a vine. These are metaphors. Jesus used figures of speech all the time. So for him to say, this is my blood, talking about the wine, it's obviously not meant to be taken literally. Okay, it's a figure of speech. And, you know, and he didn't say, you know, this, you know, he didn't say, take this bread, you know, one day a priest will perform something and it'll turn into my, <laughs> you know, my body, literally. No, he didn't say that. Nothing at all is spoken like that. But we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25, you know, he says, This do ye as oft ye drink as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. So he clearly says there that these things are to be done in remembrance of him. The bread is meant to be a symbol of his body, and the wine is meant to be a symbol of his blood. Do this in remembrance. And so we should also, you know, uh, Catholics say that, you know, that um, <clears throat> the bread becomes his body and the wine becomes his blood. And so they're re-sacrificing him, okay? Every time they do this transubstantiation, they are redoing the sacrifice of Christ. It's like his body is being broken again. It's like his blood is being shed again. Which another thing to remember or to say is that, you know, in Matthew, the verse that I talked about in Matthew, Jesus said, you know, drink of this cup, you know, this is my blood that is shed, and his blood hasn't been shed yet, so it doesn't make any sense to take it literally again, for many reasons. But, where was I going here? <laughs> Let's see here. Okay, so they do this over and over again, okay, every service or whatever, they do the transubstantiation, and they're redoing the sacrifice. Well, it's important to know that the Bible says that Jesus' sacrifice was a sacrifice once and for all. So we can go to Hebrews and see that in a couple of places, plainly stated. Hebrews 10.10. 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. By the which... Will by the which will we are we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Okay, so he only had to die once. He doesn't have to be re-crucified over and over again. Okay, and let's look at Hebrews chapter seven verse twenty-seven. Hebrews seven twenty-seven. Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins, and then for the people's, for this he did once, when he offered up himself. Okay, so in the Old Testament we got the priests who have to offer up sacrifice for their own sins, and then for, for the other people's, but for Jesus' sacrifice it was only needed once, and that happened at Calvary, okay, when Jesus was crucified. So, let's look at another verse that they'll use, which is John 6, 53. John 6, 53. 
Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. So again, they'll take this literally. You have to literally eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and literally drink his blood, or you have no life in you. And an interesting thing is to look back a little bit in this chapter, back to just the verse before it, where it says, The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? You see, the Jews didn't understand what Jesus was saying, just like the Roman Catholics don't understand what Jesus was saying. They tried to understand it literally. So how does this even make sense? Well, Jesus answered in chapter 6, verse 62 and 63. He said, What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So Jesus is talking about his words and believing in them. And so we see that eating and drinking is a synonym for believing. And there's a good reason why Jesus uses this analogy or this metaphor of eating and drinking for believing. It's because in the Old Testament, the priests would eat the sacrifices. They would have to. In Leviticus chapter 6, verse 26. Go to Leviticus 6, 26. Levit Leviticus 6, 26. The priest that offereth it for sin shall eat it, and the holy place shall it be eaten, and the court of the tabernacle of the congregation. And if we look at verse 29, it says, All the males among the priests shall eat thereof, it is most holy. So they were to eat of the sacrifices. Okay. And um, so they were, they were cleansed by this. And Jesus is saying, by using this illustration of eating and drinking, he is referencing to the Old Testament, and he's saying that he is the fulfillment of that. He is the ultimate sacrifice, and that to have your sins forgiven, everyone is to believe in him. Okay, to partake of him, to eat and to drink of him, and therefore to believe in him. He's the ultimate fulfillment. And he's also demonstrating the priesthood of believers because it talks about the priests eating of the uh, sacrifice in the Old Testament. And Jesus is calling for all men and women to partake of him. And so therefore, there's the priesthood of all believers. And so... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, the Catholics try to take this hardcore literal interpretation of these verses. That's absolutely false, and anybody should be able to see it. That's loony. And you know, I really think about these people that come up with these false religions. You know, Joseph Smith and Mormonism and Muhammad and stuff and Islam. And you know, you really gotta think that they're really purposely being deceptive to come up with these things. And it's just hard to believe that there's like billions of Catholics out there. I don't know the number. I was going to look it up, but I forgot. But I'm sure it's just an insanely high number. You know, Catholics all over the world that are falling for this stuff. And it's just hard to believe that so many people are deceived by something that's so blatantly false. If you just read the scriptures, you know, it, it explains itself. I can't believe it. And so... uh you know, I used some different resources for these studies, and one of them was Dave Hunt's The Woman Rides the Beast, which I'm sure I don't agree with everything because he's talking about the end times and stuff, and I plan on agree with like, but he points out a lot of stuff about the Catholic Church. That's, it's a good resource just for, you know, studying the Catholic Church if you just look at it for that. But the point is that there was something interesting, some interesting things that he said in there too, um, that... <clears throat> basically, you know, what was it? John the Baptist said something like, if God wanted to, he's able to raise up uh, sons of Abraham from these stones or something like that. And, you know, if that miracle was to take place, if, if God was to transform a stone into a person, then that stone, you know, would have arms and legs and a head, and it would become a person, right? And so here the Catholics are saying that the wafer is transformed into the body of Jesus. But it's not, it's still just a wafer. And so, I thought it was funny that Dave Hunt uses this example, and I really like his illustrations. But uh, he's talking about when Jesus turned water into wine. 
and you know what if the uh, the master of the banquet or whoever that drank from it they said you know they drank it and they said this is water and the disciples are like no Jesus turned it into wine and he's like no this looks like water it tastes like water this is water <laughs> you know they're no Jesus he transformed it into you know wine no that's not what the master of the banquet said he said this is wine this is the good wine right Jesus really did a miracle there he turned water into wine yeah you know, these Catholics say that they're turning these wafers into the body of Christ they're turning this wine into the blood of Christ no it's still wine it still smells like wine it still tastes like wine okay it still gets old like wine and, and the wafers they decay and that's another thing I've seen a lot of people say that you can talk about the verse where you know that Jesus body wouldn't see any corruption or whatnot and so these wafers you know they decay and they get old and moldy okay so how could that be true that that's the body of Christ so that's interesting too I didn't really you know want to use that exactly as an argument but I do think that uh, Dave Hunt's illustration of the Jesus turning water into wine that's that's a great one because there's really no miracle here and it's not true the bread is still the bread the wine is still the wine as Catholics are teaching false doctrine but the big important thing that I almost forgot about the main thing about this, you might say, well, it's just a silly, absurd teaching or whatever. No, here's the real problem with Catholicism, because later on, again, in the Catholic Catechism, in the Catholic Catechism, it says in Article 1393, it says, Holy Communion separates us from sin. Whoa, what? You know, and there's a lot more that I could read here. I can continue and read a little bit. It says, the body of Christ we receive in Holy Communion. Okay, the body of Christ we receive, the literal body of Christ that we're receiving, according to the Catholics, is given up for us. Okay, it's like it's re-sacrificed. And the blood we drink shed for many for the forgiveness of our sins. For this reason, the Eucharist cannot unite us to Christ without at the same time cleansing us from past sins and preserving us from future sins. So basically, when Catholics are t partaking of this uh, wine and the bread, the wafer, uh, they're thinking that they're receiving forgiveness of sins from that. Now, that makes salvation to be of works, which the Bible is absolutely against. And so, you know, there's ways the Catholics try to get around that and say, well, they're doing this in faith. And so, you know, it's like faith and works or whatever, but it's works. And the Bible says that salvation is by grace through faith. And Jesus said repeatedly to believe in him, believe in him, whoever believes should not perish but have everlasting life, so forth and so on. So there's the real issue. It's, it's not only just an absurd doctrine, but they're leading people to hell with this doctrine. Because if people are really trusting and eating that wafer and drinking of that wine, that it's somehow going to save them from going to hell. And they truly haven't repented, put their faith in Christ, then no, they're still headed for hell. And so um, they're actually becoming like twofold the children of hell because they're being deceived into, you know, a false salvation. And it's also, you know, I think important to teach that I think the Lutherans basically teach the same thing, but they might not teach the forgiveness of sins part of it, but they teach transubstantiation. I think that the wafer becomes the body of Christ and the wine becomes the blood, basically. Lutherans are basically like Catholic, Catholic light. And, uh, you know, Martin Luther had a lot of issues, and he denied free will, just like John Calvin. And he wrote, um, I don't even remember what the book was now, but basically just a book against free will, which I want to go over more, hopefully soon, and, and show verses that explicitly teach free will from Scripture, even though the Calvinists will deny it. But there's that, and uh hope you guys learned something. I did just from this little short study, and uh, there's a lot more to be said on transubstantiation. I'll talk about it more in the future, but I just want to get some things out there. I talked about how they teach Peter was the first pope, and that was wrong, and, you know, I want to talk more about the worship of Mary, more about, you know, how they teach salvation by works, and this is one part of that. You know, they have their different sacraments, and Calvinism is, or Catholicism, it's just corrupt through and through, and it's unbelievable how many followers there are. 
But, you know, I pray that uh, some Catholics will hear this and, you know, maybe they'll be convinced to study and maybe they'll start changing their mind about things. You know, and I thought about, you know, when I do teachings like this, it's like, man, there's just hundreds upon thousands of videos rebuking transubstantiation out there. You know, why should I even do this? But, you know, there's still billions of Catholics, so there still needs to be more and more videos on this. You know, it is important, and I want to have that in my ministry, in my videos, and on my website to have these things, you know, explained and debunked. And, you know, I want to cover all this stuff, so... You know, I'm thinking way ahead of all the things that I want to do, but I just got to do it little by little whenever I feel motivated, whenever I feel like, you know, this is the direction I want to go in. But, you know, lots of people have written to me and stuff and talked to me about doing things on Catholicism, and I definitely want to, and I've started to, you know, put some cracks in their doctrines, so I plan to more and more. But, you know, I'm just ranting now, so thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to end this video now. God bless.